profitable Betfair trading contains many facets. But one of the key things that you need to understand is you need to have a strategy and you need to understand which market you would put that strategy into. For every market there is a strategy and every strategy a market. And your objective as a trader is to match those two up. Once you've achieved that, and it's all about getting that trade into the market, maximizing your potential for profit and minimizing the potential for losses. There are a couple of other factors, but typically every day that I turn up to trade, I'm looking across the entire card and I'm looking for specific markets that will exhibit behavior that I've seen before. And when I identify those markets, then I know sort of what strategy to deploy into them. So in this video, I'm gonna show you another type of market and another type of strategy and how you can actively manage that and find exactly the same opportunity yourself. I've been successfully betting and trading for over two decades. If you want more videos like this and you want me to describe more of what I do, then give us a like. If you want to talk to like-minded people, visit the Bet Angel Forum where you can do exactly that, but also visit our website where you can download a free trial of Bet Angel. So at the start of every day, I bring all of the markets that I'm interested in trading in to Guardian. And that's where I get the first look at what I'm going to be doing over the course of the day. The reason that I do that is that it allows me to highlight key opportunities. And when you look across all of the markets, you can judge things like how much time you have on each race, where all of the feature races are, where the big meetings are. Um, but also if you use Guardian to its full extent, you can actually get it to list all of the information in a format that you would like. Not only that, you can actually flick between different views of the markets uh, with a couple of clicks and you can apply automation to it to alert you to opportunities. So if you load up Guardian at the beginning of the day, that can give you a really good look at the markets. You can modify that to suit, um, but you can also use it to alert you to key opportunities and highlight those opportunities to you, either in real time or on the Guardian screen itself. So at the start of the day, that's pretty much the first thing that I do to get a view on the market, see what opportunities there are and where some of the key trading opportunities uh, could be over the course of the day. So when you get a short priced favorite, um, all of the money in the market is heavily focused on that particular runner. Um, and you see huge amounts of uh, money active and in the market being bet and placed on that runner. And you also see large amounts on either side of the book. And that has the habit of crushing that particular volume. So you don't tend to see big sweeping moves all over the place. You tend to see very small moves just coming in one tick at a time. It's a, like a slow motion market. And as a consequence, the sort of way that we would trade this is we would be going for a, a one tick gain. We would probably deploy some form of a scalping strategy or something where we're just in and out for one tick. And then we can repeat that process from there. So yeah, when you see a short, um, heavy odds on favorite, then that's the way that the market tends to exhibit itself. And you also tend to find um, that the money can dribble in over a period of time as people get more and more confident about the chances of this particular horses. But you also see a surge of activity towards the end of the market. And that is because if you're a, a, a punter with uh, large amounts of money and you want to put it on this sure thing, then you really want to see the horse before you decide to place a bet in the market. So typically what you tend to see is uh, increasing support for the runner over the course of the day, but more particularly when they actually start parading. And to examine why that is, let's have a look at a parade ring. So have a look at uh, this clip that I took recently at a parade ring. I managed to catch this just right, um, and it will give you some insight as to exactly what you're looking for when you're looking at a horse that is behaving particularly well, or not, as the case may be. So we've got three horses in here. I'm going to play the clip across for you now and then we're going to reappraise it so that you can uh, get a, a view, a feel for exactly the sort of thing that you're looking for when you're looking at horses in a parade. So let's play this clip again, um, but I'm going to talk you through what I see in this particular um, parade. And this, the thing that we can see, we've got three really good examples here. The first horse that comes into shot is actually wearing a red hood. The hood is put on a horse to basically keep it calm and settled, and then it gets removed when we get to post. Um, so that indicates that this horse is often a little bit nervous and is wearing the hood to calm itself down. So that's a, a slight negative. It's not an amazing negative, but you're basically sort of saying this horse could be a little bit quirky. If this horse was at heavy odds on, 
um, and it's potentially quirky, then of course that price could fly up if it, if, if it exhibits that behavior. So that's a bit of a negative uh, when you're looking at things. When we look at the second horse, the second horse looks perfectly well behaved. It's calm, um, it's parading particularly well. There seems to be absolutely no issues with this. If this was your short priced favorite, then you'd feel pretty happy about it, and so would betters, and they would probably put their money on at this point, seeing that the horse is nice and settled. Then when we look at the very last runner in this selection, you can see that this horse is all over the place. Thank goodness that horses don't carry weapons, otherwise there could be carnage here. <laughs> and um, when you look at this particular horse, it is misbehaving significantly. So as a consequence, um, this is a big negative for this particular runner. You would definitely not back this, and if it was at a very short price, there's absolutely no way that you'd have anything to do with this particular runner. So when you're looking at horses in the parade ring or on TV pictures, then necessarily you're looking for the horse to be perfectly calm. If it exhibits any characteristics or it's wearing um, all sorts of equipment, then maybe you'd be a little bit nervous about doing what I'm about to do on this trade because you want the horse to go to post calmly, be completely under control. Um, and if you see those uh, characteristics, then it's very likely that you'll see a little bit of late money for this particular runner. So one of the unusual things about the way that you trade this market is that you're going to have to put a large stake within the market. Now, if you were having a punt, you'd have to put a large amount of money in the market to get a decent return anyway, because it's such heavy odds on. But when you're trading, you're going to have to put a decent chunk of money through the market. If we put a thousand pound into the market um, and it moves by one tick, uh, then we will get 10 pound out of the market. It doesn't sound like a great return, does it really, in all honesty? Um, and that freaks people out because ultimately, you know, would you, uh, prefer to put down ten pounds to win a thousand would you pr prefer to put down a thousand to win ten and the fact is people always go for the former there um, and when you're uh, trading and you've been betting for a long period of time it just seems madness to put down a thousand pound just to win ten pound but remember here that is going to work in a narrow range so your total risk is not a thousand pound it's a thousand pound multiplied by that narrow range it's just going to be a fraction of a percent of that thousand pound if you trade properly i.e you trade in you trade out you hedge your position all of those sort of things if you follow a proper trading plan you'll be absolutely fine but because you're going to have to use larger amounts it does freak people out but i never see that thousand pound at total risk i just see a tiny percentage of it at potential risk within the market. And it's that balance of the profits and losses that I make on this particular trade that deliver the profit over the longer term. But from there, I trade in a fairly similar manner. So I'm basically putting some trades in, establishing a position within the market. I'm putting some closing trades immediately below it where I think that they could possibly get matched. But on this particular occasion, I'm very often putting amounts of money into the market and then trading out one tick uh, below it. I'm managing the position in that particular manner. I don't want to be in the market for huge amounts of time. I'm just basically uh, pushing the money in, taking the money out as quickly as I can and repeating that process endlessly. And then what you actually end up with is, after you've done that particular process, a decent result. You can see here how much I've staked on the back side, how much I've staked on the lay side, and I've profited from the difference between the two. And you're looking at that and you're sort of thinking, wow, that's ridiculous amounts of money. I'll never have that within my bank. But the fact is, you don't have to. I actually traded this on an account with far, far fewer amounts of money on it um, than I actually managed to trade through it. How is that possible? Well, we're putting a trade in, we're taking a trade out, and then we're repeating that process. At the end of that process, you're either left with a profit or a loss, and then you can reuse that money as many times as you like. So despite the fact that I've traded a lot of money through this market, I actually never ever risked anywhere near that amount of money. That is one of the wonderful tricks about trading. So once I'm in and active on this particular market, I'm basically going to be scalping. I'm going to be doing the same thing that you've seen me do in other videos. There's no point in dragging the video on for much longer to show you uh, the, the, how I trade because I've done that in a thousand other videos. But basically I'm establishing a position in the market. I'm expecting the price to move a little bit. So I'm putting my closing positions um, a little bit uh, nearer to what you'd normally expect. They're going to be quite close to my entry point within the market. And then I'm looking to repeat that trade again and again. And because of the characteristics that I've just described to you, I'm expecting there to be a slight bias um, for the price to come in. So I'm taking advantage of that by putting the orders a little bit further out of the money, being a bit more aggressive in terms of the position that I entered the market um, and 
away we go from there. So yeah, I'm going for very small gains within this market and I'm repeating that trade as often as possible. And I'm doing the same thing that you've seen me do in other markets, establish a position in the market, assess where the potential bias is and put the closing trades in close to where I think that they are likely to be matched. So yeah, that's what I've done on this particular trade. So when you start a trading session, you should be looking at all of the opportunities that are in front of you. If you're a bet angel user, it's very easy to find those because you can reorganize your screen um, in such a way that it will highlight those to you automatically. And you can actually get it to do some automation or alerting to highlight specific opportunities for you. But by identifying where the short priced favorites were and getting involved in the market and just uh, looking to go for little gains within this market with larger stakes, we were able to get a decent profit from the market. You don't need to be freaked out about using larger stakes because you're really looking at how big the traded range is. And on average, you're going to win and lose um, exactly the same amount of money if you traded it at random. But if you put a little bit of logic into it and you actually have eyes on the course, then you can mitigate some of the risk of the trade going against you. Uh, but essentially, we also uh, put more than one trade through the market. So despite having a small bank, we actually managed to trade through the market many times the bank that we actually had within our account. Um, and that is one of the great characteristics of the way that betting exchanges work. It's perfectly possible to put multiple trades through the market and significant turnover, even with a small bank. So yeah, when you see this opportunity in the future, you should know how to trade it. And in fact, on this day, this was just one of two opportunities that occurred on this particular day. They're a little while apart from each other, but they both traded in exactly the same manner. So yeah, next time you see a market that looks like this, I'm pretty confident that you should know exactly how to trade it.